this is going to be a crazy match. Oh, I can't say that Spy Kids is quote to me. Josh anymore. Which one is this? you got to cheer me on. <laughs> Game one began at 9.20 a.m. that morning. The boys would have to be the first to win three games in order to be crowned champion. Ethan started out strong, becoming the first gatekeeper of the day. Sadly, he would not survive. Three. Oh my god. <laughs> Any team damage. Keep that. So, Drawing the dick dice to stay alive. I stay alive even when I die. <laughs> And Gabe would take his place. His survival would come down to whether or not Ethan could roll a five on an eight-sided oh, die, cool. causing Gabe to lose his turn. Please roll five. Five. Roll five. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want a five. Go. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Three, two, one. There's no people. Oh, one, one, one. Gee. Ultimately, Gabe was victorious, winning game one. Well, that concludes game one. Is it my turn? Okay, next game. Game two. Juan would be the first to become gatekeeper, and Steven would try to take it away from him. But Steven blundered. Juan's fate would fall into the hands of Ethan Miller. Juan died. I saw that. Ethan, what do you need to roll? All right. Juan, you have to roll to kill yourself. Five. Five. Kill yourself. Oh! 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 Kill yourself. Five. 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 Ethan then became GK, and Steven would have an opportunity to kill him. But to do so, he would have to roll an 8 on an 8-sided die to defeat him. Steven would fail again. Next up was Danny Gomez. His chances were decent as he had an opportunity for a dragon roll, but of course, he rolled a six on his trait. Oh my god, Jake is a six. Oh my god! No, that count! No, it was on the corner. It the corner. It the corner. It the corner. He would lose his turn, giving Ethan a guaranteed victory. Five. Ethan won game two with all four gates. Absolute domination. Game three. Gabe was the first to take the center this game, and he did so with three gates to his name. Okay. I really yeah, attack the center. I'm gay. Oh snap! Once again, Steven would have the opportunity to defeat Gabe. He was getting angry. Attack me! I'm fed up! Attack me, Gabe! <laughs> attack me, Gabe! Please attack me! In one last battle, Steven would attempt to dethrone Gabe. 
12 seconds. Five gatekeeper. All right, here we go. Let's go. Five, eight, 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 eight. All right. Somebody count me down. Five, Three, two, two five. five. In winning the battle, Gabe would take the fourth gate, another domination. Gabe, after almost not even making it to the finals, would have two wins to his name and would be only one game away from victory. That's game. Wow. Mother new game, everybody. Game four. Steven was mad. So freaking mad. He was so close. He, was he had failed to make any real threats during the first three games. Gabe was already up two wins. It was now or never. Were you in it? Steven had found his opportunity to take the center, but would roll a trait that caused him to have minus three gate damage. He would now have to roll at least a four to take the center. It was a 50 50. Steven would win, meaning all three members of the triad had a win under their belt. Game 5. Danny won and Keith teamed up this game to ensure the big three wouldn't get another game under their belt. And none other than Keith took the victory. Game six, Gabe was being killed right off the bat in order to avoid him being able to win the whole championships. Other than that, the players had divided themselves into two alliances, Steven and Danny versus Ethan, Juan, and Keith. Both Steven and Keith would find themselves with three health, and Keith would go for an Elderman Tower. Oh my god, this is freaking crazy! I'm gonna get lit, y'all gonna watch a murder. I'm gonna murder. Oh my god. I'm gonna murder Steven McDowell, watch this. If he was successful, he would do enough damage to kill Steven, saving himself. He only needed to roll a four. But he rolled a one. Next, Juan would attempt to finish poor Steven, only needing a three to destroy the tower. What just happened? Double gate damage. Um, go for the do three damage. No, kill him. No, kill Steven. Steven, look at No, we're not killing Steven. We're not killing Steven. Do the arm roll. Do the arm roll. All you have to do is get a three or higher. Come on. Keith and Keith has them. Keith has them. Kill Keith. Kill. You made an alliance. And you. And you made an alliance. Also rolled a one. Steven now had the chance to kill Keith and get back into the game. Of course, he only had to roll a two. How could he possibly fail? But alas, despite having odds in his favor, he only rolled a one. Holy crap! Next, it was Danny's turn, who destroyed Keith and reset the tower. But Ethan wouldn't be so unlucky. With a roll of the dice, Ethan killed Steven, stealing HP and taking the center gate in one blow. Ethan was now the gatekeeper. 
Ethan's turn as gatekeeper would be heavily resisted with three dragon roll attempts and three rotations. It would seem impossible for Ethan to survive. I can't lose! I'm gonna cry! Three, two, one! Yeah! I'm gonna cry! Oh! Oh my god! 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 Ethan would ultimately be too strong, winning game six, tied with Gabe. They both only needed one more win to take home the prize. Game seven. Due to issues with the live stream, game seven was never recorded, but two major events occurred. One, tired of losing, dropped out of the tournament. Seven games in, he had no victories. But who did win? Was it Gabe? Was it Ethan? Was the tournament over? Of course not. It could not be anyone else other than Stephen and Jeannie McDowell, meaning the big three were all tied up. If any of them won the next match, they would be crowned champion.